All right, here we go. This is Mr. Bruss. We're going to start a new chapter here on similar figures. Uh, I always think similar figures. I think of Austin Powers and Dr. Evil. He clones himself. What are similar figures? Jot this down. It means similar figures have the same shape, but they are a different size. So Minnie me and Dr. Evil, same shape, different size. How does that look for shapes? So we're going to look at all kinds of different shapes. Basically, we're going to take something like here's a triangle, and I'm going to take it, and what am I going to do? I'm going to do something like, hey, let's just make it bigger. So we would say these two triangles are similar. It's exactly the same shape, but it's a different size. Or I may come down here and shrink it. Whoopsh, there it is like that. Something like that. So these are similar. Let's do one more similar because not only can I take it, maybe make it a little bit bigger, I may also rotate it so it looks a little different. I'll do something like this. These are all similar triangles. They're all the same shape. I just kind of tweak their size. Maybe I tweak their orientation. Something like that. So we're going to practice uh, kind of like naming these different similar figures and then solving, finding some missing side. Should be pretty awesome. Here we go. So let's start with these two parallelograms here. So we've got things called corresponding angles and corresponding sides. What does that mean? Well, when I name this, I want to say, oh yeah, these two are similar. So I made them similar. We're going to do this little wavy line here. Fill this in. Whoosh. That means similar. Ooh, that looks nice. Little wave means similar. So if I were to name this, all you have to do is go around in a circle. So I'm going to name this figure L-O-V-E. Look at that. I love it. And I'm going to say love is similar to what? Well, I have to go exactly the same order. I just can't randomly pick these letters. Since I started with L and went this way, I have to start with M and go this way. So how am I going to name this one? This is M to the A to the T to the H. You have to go in that same order. So love is similar to math. So what's so cool about this is they correspond. So angle L, see this little symbol here, that's angle. So angle L corresponds to what? So if I look at angle L, here's angle L. See that angle right there? Whoosh, this angle is the same as this angle over here, M. So I say angle L matches angle M. And if I look at how I named it, I had to do it up here too, L matches M. So O matches what? This angle here, I could say, yeah, it looks like about 70 degrees. It's the same as this angle over here. This would also be 70. So angle O is to angle A. Angle V is to angle T, so here is V to T, and it matches in our order. V is to T, and then E matches H up here, so I know it's the same angle. So we say these angles are congruent. They're the exact, oh my gosh, I typed that wrong. <laughs> angle E can't be correspond to E. Angle E corresponds to H. So they're the same degree, so the same measure. Awesome. Same thing for sides. This little bar up top means this side. I'm talking if I went from M to A. So if I went from M to A, if I went from here to here, who does he match? Well, he's going to match L to O, the low. Here we go, is the low. And I put a little bar on top. That means the line segment from L to O. So from A to T matches what? A to T matches O to V. So we'll go O, V. And T to H, the bottom matches the bottom. So they're corresponding parts. So it may be an angle. It may be a side, V is to E. And then the last one, H and M, great store, to E and L, boom, there we go, E, L. They correspond. So we have to be able to match them up. Awesome. So that's just matching up corresponding angles, corresponding sides. Why is that so important? Well, now I'm going to throw some numbers in there. So we're looking for some kind of scale factor. So these are the same shape. This is love math. I know you love math. So. Is this one over here twice as big, three times as big, four times as big? Well, we need some kind of scale factor. So we need the corresponding parts. So if I look at this, who corresponds to who? Let's see if I can get a highlighter. Can I get a highlighter here? This is a lot of work here. So if I look at LE, this corresponding side matches who? Remember, it matches this one over here. So because they match their corresponding sides, ah, I can say what? This 2 is to this 4. 2 is to 4. So that's going to be my scale factor, the one I can line up. I can say 2 is to 4. That's from small to big. Or I could have went from big to small. Either way is cool. You can say 4 is to 2 or 2 is to 4. And we should probably reduce that for scale factor. One, uh, 2 or 4 is just 1 half. Or 4 over 2 is just 2. So really I can say what? I can say this parallelogram is twice as big as the other one. Or I can say the small one is half as big as the big one. So you can do it either way. They're both right. It depends on which way you like to go. Awesome. How can I find this missing side? Well, check it out. Luckily, the top 
is proportional to the top. And there's the keyword proportional, back to proportions, I love it. So you can use the reduce form, I'm just gonna use what was given. We can say, hey, two to four, the left side, two is to four, so from left side, is the same as what? Three is to x. So as long as you're consistent, I went from small two is to four as three is to x. Now we've got a fantastic little proportion here where I can cross multiply. Three times four is uh, 12. Two times x is two x. And then divide both sides by two to solve for this. And you maybe just figured this out in your head. You're like, Mr. Bruss, I didn't need to do that proportion. You will eventually though. <laughs> so for this one, you could maybe do it in your head. Sure, it makes sense. These are similar. It's This one's twice as big as this one. So if two goes to four, what does three go to? It goes to six. So it makes sense. Always double check it. Sure, that's gonna be a six right there. It's twice as big as three. So you probably didn't need the proportion to realize it's twice as big, but we're gonna get some crazy decimals. Proportions are nice. All right, we're just gonna do more of these and we're done. Rock and roll. So here it is. Let's start with scale factor. So you gotta just match up a side. So be careful who you match up. Uh, it looks like I can't use the X. The four, there is no bottom. The nine, there is no side, but check it out. The top matches. So sometimes there's some extra numbers in there. So what can I say here? I can say uh, 21 is to seven. Or if you want, you can say seven is to 21. It doesn't matter. I would like you to reduce it though. So 21 over seven is three, or seven over 21 is a third. So what does that mean? You can say the big one's three times as big as the little one, or you can say the little one's one third the size of that. So these are similar like that, and we're good to go. So that's the factor. How many times bigger is scale factor? Once we have that, let's just set it up. So we know 21 is to seven. And again, I usually don't use reduce, but you could use three or one over three, totally cool. So 21 over seven, they match. I'm trying to find X, who matches X? Well, it looks like 24. So you just gotta find the corresponding side. So if 21 is to seven, 24 is to X. And maybe you know it because you can see that scale factor. Let's just cross multiply here if that's cool. Seven times 24, this is gonna be a lot of mental math for Mr. Russ. I think it's 168, oh my gosh, I hope that's right. 21 times X is 21X. Let's divide this by 21, divide by 21, and I'm guessing X equals eight. X equals eight, Whoopsh. does that make sense? Yes, why? Because uh, it's three times as big, so three times eight is 24. So I can double check with the scale factor. That one worked out well. Again, maybe you saw it because this was a nice scale factor. Only one more problem. I hope it's got an unfriendly scale factor. I hope it really is gonna challenge us. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be a challenge. Check this out. So these are similar. So all of these are similar. So uh, somewhere I'm gonna write in the directions. These two figures are similar. So how do I do this? Who matches who? I've got a bunch of numbers. Well, check it out. I took this shape. And then not only did I make it bigger, it looks like I spun it. So we're gonna kind of rotate it around. We're gonna make it bigger. And you see how that's the shape right there? Something along those lines, isn't that pretty cool? So there it is, there's my shape. So we gotta look for that spin. So who matches who? It looks to me like when I spun it, you see how C is right here? C is gonna match T. And I think this line right here, nine is the key, is gonna match 12. That's what I would, Recommend there's probably other ones. I think you could use six is to nine here on the bottom um, because I spun it. So I'm gonna say the scale factor is 12 over nine, or you can always go the other direction, or nine over 12. Can we clean that up a little bit? Let's reduce it. So I think three goes into them both. So it's gonna be four thirds, or it's going to be three fourths. So the small one is three fourths of the big one. The big one's four thirds times as big. Either way, use the reduced use the nine over 12, I'm just gonna stick with nine over 12. So nine is to 12, as what? Who is to who? So nine is to 12, I can say six is to nine, doesn't help me though, I'm looking for X. It looks like this little guy over here matches this little guy over here when I spun it. So it's kind of tricky, you gotta, think, you gotta visualize that spin. So nine is to 12, as three is to X. Boom, that is it. Let's just finish it up for some closure. Uh, 12 times three is 36, nine times X is nine X. Finish it up, divide by nine, divide by nine. That's a terrible looking nine. What in the world? There it is. And what do we get here? It looks like four. Does that seem reasonable for this side to be four? Sure, it looks pretty good. Especially since the ratio is three fourths, three is to four. Fantastic, that is it. Setting up proportions, I wanna see that proportion. Solving for these missing sides, find the corresponding parts. I love it, I could do it all day long. Good luck on the practice and on the match check. Peace out.